Hello everyone. So in this tutorial, we are going to be looking at character retopology in ZBrush. This is a follow-on tutorial from Scotting the hands, arms, feet, legs, torso, and head. So if you haven't watched those, then please check them out first on my channel. I'd like to make a shout out and special thanks to the YouTuber Danny Mac 3 d I'll be primarily using his topological videos as guidelines throughout this tutorial. Uh, I've put some links in the description to his videos if you want to go ahead and watch those. He does, however, primarily use 3D Coat, which is great, but for this tutorial, I'm going to be walking you through the entire process in ZBrush. I'd also advise following some form of template when completing any form of retopology. Um, it just makes things a lot easier. That's what I'm doing, so I advise you do the same. Okay, so we are going to start by retopologizing the head. Uh, for this, we're going to use a Z-sphere. So append a Z-sphere into your subtools and shrink it down and position it so that it fits within the middle of your character's head, like so. Okie dokie. So now we're going to go down to the topology panel and press edit topology. Now you see when we draw out some topology over the top of our sculpt, you get these lovely little points. So to do this, you need to make sure that you have edit and draw mode on and you just click wherever you want to insert the points like so. You can delete them by holding down alt and clicking on them whilst in draw mode. You can also move the points about to further adjust them if you uh, switch over to the move mode rather than draw mode. Finally, make sure the X symmetry is activated so that you are drawing on both sides of the face simultaneously. Okay, so we shall start this retopology process by drawing out the loops around the eyes. Eight is going to be our magic number for this tutorial. So we are going to draw eight planes around the eyelids like so. And I'm going to have another eight that go around the eye sockets. Four on top, four on the bottom. So you'll notice that a red circle indicates which point you are drawing from as you carry on uh, drawing out your topology using the Z-sphere. Uh, once you've got these loops in, I'd advise testing out uh, the 3D preview. So you can preview all this topology uh, by pressing A or by going under the adaptive skin and pressing preview. Uh, when you do this, do make sure that the density and Dynamesh sliders are both set to their minimum states. So, i.e. 1 for density and 0 for uh, the Dynamesh slider. A uh, reason for this is that we don't want any further modifications to our topology as of yet. We just want it to be exactly the same as what we are drawing out here. Alright, lovely. So, now that we have those loops drawn out, we shall move on to creating the loop around the nose and mouth. Uh, if you can't edit your topology at this stage for some reason, then uh, just a few checks. Make sure that you are out of the preview mode and that you definitely have edit topology turned on. Okie dokie. Right, so select the lowest point of the loop like this whilst in move mode. This point is going to be our first pole which means five edges are going to stem from it rather than four. Very scary stuff. Okay, switch back over to draw mode and draw out two more faces that will join over the nose. Now, I know that we are stretching out our polygons here, but for the time being, that is absolutely fine. We can insert more loops later on. Trust me, just keep it simple to begin with and make sure the key loops and poles are in the right place first. Draw out another four faces that wrap around the chin like so. Once you've done that, switch over to move mode to deselect those points and immediately switch back to draw mode. We're now going to create a separate loop around the mouth. For now, I'm just going to go with three faces on top and three on the bottom. Now bear in mind that when I'm counting these faces, I'm not including symmetry. Okay, so I'm only including one side of the face when I'm counting them. All right. So we shall join this loop up with the others in a short while. And we're also going to go ahead and create another loop around the uh, lip loop that we've just created here, like so. So be sure to keep moving and evenly spacing out these polygons as you progress throughout the tutorial. We are now going to draw another loop around the ear. 
remember what I told you about deselecting the previous points first. This loop will consist of our magic number of polygons, which is eight, four around the back and four at the front. And we're going to move those points towards the base of the ear as much as we can. Okie dokie, there's a problem here, isn't there? If you ever miscount the number of faces like I have done here, then you can simply remove the extra points just by holding down Alt and clicking on them first whilst in draw mode. So I'll do that and just remove this extra edge here and join it back up like so, no problem. Remember to save your work often. This process does require a lot of attention and you don't want to exhaust yourself unnecessarily. We're now going to create another pole or five edged point right here. This will allow the polygons to comfortably flow in multiple directions simultaneously. Remember that the point of retopology is primarily for animation and creating low resolution meshes that are easier to manipulate. So I'm going to draw out three quads here from that pole. The lowest one is going to head towards the chin, whilst the other two are following the loop around the ear like so. From this pole, there will be five faces that join up to the chin. You should notice that another pole has been created from this where we join up to the loop around the nose and mouth. Next, I'll create another pole here to allow for a loop that encompasses the entire forehead. This will consist of four quads. I will now join the faces around the nose and eyes to this loop, thus creating another pole at the inner brow like so. Once again, these will be quite stretched out, but that is fine for now. Now I'm going to fill in the quads to join the loops around the mouth and the edge of the jaw. Notice how this creates a three pointed edge here. Now I'm stretching out a second set of quads to join up with the loop around the eyes. This will temporarily create three poles, but don't worry about them for now. So moving back down to the chin, I'm just going to spread out these points slightly to make space for additional geometry. I'm going to join these quads up until the corner of the mouth. So shooting back up to the temple to create two more quads along this row. Now we don't want a huge amount of edges running down the back of the head. So we'll just round this off with another pole right here and create another three quads to join in the middle. I'm going to go ahead and create another row on top of these. Now for the next row, I'm going to close the side loops with another free edged point like so. I can now fill in the remaining quads in this section. Remember to keep moving and spacing out all of these active points as you go along. Continuing down the back of the head and into the neck, I'm going to fill in the remaining rows and create a pole at the bottom of the ear loop. This will allow additional loops to be formed. Following on from this, I shall connect one of these rows to where the jawline will be. This will also require a pole to continue the geometry around and underneath the chin. From here, I can round off some of the loops to form the throat. This will also reduce the number of edges that will be going into the body. I'll now go ahead and create the necessary quads to fill in this section. I shall keep highlighting the five edge points with a red circle and a free edge point with a green circle to help you gain the key information as we progress throughout this walkthrough. We're now ready to add some additional loops to our topology. I'll start with the upper right of center eyelid and continue to create the edge loop through the back of the head. You should make sure that all active points are deselected before attempting to draw this out. I'm also going to add another loop to the inner side. You'll notice that I haven't continued the loops all the way through to the back of the head just yet. This will come later on once we've committed to all of the topology at the front of the face. I'll further create another loop to go over the top of the nose like so. And I'll insert another loop just below it from the inner lower lid. You're probably noticing that I am simply just splitting the already existing loops. This is a far easier and cleaner process than trying to step build loads of small quads straight away. I'm going to continue with this for the rest of the lower eyelid. I'll try not to speed this part up too much so that you can follow along. Just going to continue those new loops round to the back of the head now.
And I'm also going to go ahead and evenly space out all of these quads. I'm going to add an extra loop around the back here. We added one at the front, so I'm going to try and keep the topology nice and even. I'm going to go ahead and repeat the same process with the inner bottom lip now. And the same again with the inner top lip. What I'm going to do now is add a loop either side on the nose. Let's give it a bit more geometry so it's not quite as stretched out. And they're obviously going to continue right the way around to the back of the head. Nice, simple split up quads. And I'm going to do the same with the bottom lip now, the loop either side. Now this is going to go down towards the Adam's apple, but I don't want all of these edges going into the body. There's, there's just too many. Uh, at least there will be when I'm finished. So I'm going to round these off at the Adam's apple like so. So shooting back up to the forehead, I'm now going to uh, split these stretched out polygons as well with another edge loop. Now this edge loop is also actually going to go all the way down into the neck. So this kind of re-emphasizes the point earlier of uh, minimizing uh, unnecessary loops that are going into the neck. And once again, because I have added uh, an extra loop either side at the front, I'm going to add one at the back. While I'm in this area, I'm also going to put in another loop to uh, give the jawline a bit more definition. I'm going to continue and add a few extra loops to the entire back of the head, actually, just to even everything out nicely. I'm going to go ahead and put one more loop around the uh, lower chin area to make sure that all of the points in, the, in that region are nicely spread out. Now, moving on to the nose, I'm going to draw out five quads from the button to the edge of the nostrils like so, and I'm going to go ahead and create another row on top of that. Just going to move around some of these points to help them line up a little better. These central points can now be connected. I'm also going to insert another through them like so. Now to accommodate the nostril geometry I've just added, I'm going to add yet another loop coming down from the lower eyelid. Once again, to keep things even, I'm going to continue this loop through to the back of the head. 